True or false? Floods are never beneficial. The correct answer is false. Flooding is a natural process with beneficial impacts on the watershed. Certain species of plants and animals depend on periodic flooding. Floods deposit sediments and nutrients from the river onto the surrounding countryside, replenishing the soil and nourishing plant life. In delta regions of major rivers, floods deposit soil layers that prevent the land from being claimed by the sea. A flood occurs any time a body of water overflows or when an unusual amount of water collects in normally dry areas. A flash flood is a particularly dangerous type of flood that occurs within six hours or even an hour after the start of rainfall. Intense thunderstorm rains are the typical cause. However, the failure of a dam or levee can also trigger flash flooding. Because of their sudden onset, often coupled with high velocity, flash floods are life-threatening, especially to people in vehicles. The best defense against a flash flood is to get out of the way. Larger river floods, which develop more slowly, are often more damaging than flash floods because the inundation is more prolonged and extensive. But these floods are typically not as deadly because they afford more preparation time. Quickly developing convective weather events, with the potential for localized heavy precipitation over small watersheds, should always raise concerns for the possibility of a flash flood. Watersheds containing steep terrain are prime candidates for quick, devastating flash floods. But even in urban areas of relatively moderate terrain, the alterations to the watershed caused by man-made structures can create areas prone to flash floods. Floods are going to happen. Knowing the potential for flooding in any watershed or river basin is important. Flooding occurs whenever the amount of runoff in a watershed exceeds the capacity of stream channels or other drainage pathways to contain it. Runoff is that portion of rainfall and or snowmelt that makes its way quickly to the stream channel and contributes to flooding. The most rapid runoff occurs at the soil surface and is called surface runoff. Just below the surface, large volumes of water can move relatively quickly toward the stream channel through voids in the soil. This portion of runoff is known as interflow. Surface runoff and interflow together comprise the important water volume known to flood forecasters as runoff. This chart shows the critical factors for flooding. In addition to the amount of rainfall, which other factors may determine whether a flood will occur? All of these answers are correct. Flooding begins with more runoff than drainage channels can handle. In rural watersheds, drainage channels are primarily the natural network of streams. In urban watersheds, they can also be drainage ditches, storm sewer networks, and streets. There are three physical processes for the movement of soil water. Infiltration, transmission, and storage. Infiltration occurs at the ground surface. Transmission is the vertical and horizontal percolation that occurs within the soil. Storage manifests as increased soil moisture. As this animation shows, natural ground cover slows the speed of surface runoff, keeping water in contact with the ground surface for a longer time. This results in more infiltration into the ground, where water can then percolate downward into storage. Where humans have built impervious surfaces, greater runoff can occur for a given storm. Two important quantities for determining runoff and subsequent flooding are rainfall rate and infiltration capacity. Both are expressed as depth per time, for example, 10 millimeters per hour. Snowmelt rate could be substituted for rainfall rate. Infiltration capacity tells us how much of the rainfall can be absorbed by the ground without running off. When the rainfall rate is greater than the infiltration capacity, the difference is the runoff. For example, when the rainfall rate is 15 millimeters per hour and the infiltration capacity is 10 millimeters per hour, the difference of 5 millimeters per hour is the runoff. Infiltration capacity diminishes as soil gets wetter. It is also reduced when the ground is stripped of vegetation or covered with impervious material. The worst combination for flooding is a high rainfall rate and a low infiltration capacity such as would occur during a heavy thunderstorm in a city. 
Radar, satellite, numerical models, and other tools can help us anticipate high rainfall rates. But it is equally important to be aware of soil and surface conditions. In other words, will your infiltration capacity be low compared to the rainfall rate? Standing water in a field is a good indication that infiltration capacity is being exceeded. True or false? Floods and flash floods are observed more frequently today than they were 50 years ago. The correct answer is true for two reasons. First, they are observed more, and second, they are really occurring more. As development or urbanization takes place in natural watersheds, it radically changes water movement through those watersheds. Less water goes into the ground and more heads for the nearest stream or low-lying area. Imagine the rainwater from a sudden downpour falling to the ground in a rural area. A thick covering of trees and grasses may slow the speed at which the rain hits the ground. Once on the ground, organic matter and low spots trap the water and allow it to seep into the ground. Even if the nearest stream does flood, there are no drains or bridges to get clogged with debris and no cars or houses to get in the way. In fact, no one may even know there is a flood. Now, imagine the rain pouring down on acres of parking lots, rows of rooftops, shopping malls, gas stations, and the like. With much less water able to infiltrate into the ground, the runoff can quickly inundate the nearest stream or highway underpass. Debris gets caught against culverts and bridges, causing a rapid rise in swirling floodwaters that can undermine roads, damage property, and sweep hazardous material into the deluge. Roadways often become the path of least resistance for floodwaters. Cars and SUVs are particularly vulnerable, often swept away by as little as 18 to 30 inches of water. In urban watersheds, this can happen in less than an hour. Intense convective storms can have an especially strong impact on urban watersheds because of human alterations to natural drainage patterns. Smart growth, the idea of environmentally friendly development, includes practices that ensure water moves through and in some cases is retained in a manner that sustains a healthy watershed environment. Flash floods happen, well, in a flash. Urbanized watersheds are more prone to flash flooding because they can produce both more runoff and faster runoff. Impervious cover greatly increases the volume of runoff. Some urbanized watersheds can have greater than 50% impervious cover and see runoff volume more than double from the pre-urban volume. Runoff speed in urban watersheds can be greatly increased by a factor called stream density. Natural watersheds with efficient drainage by a large number of tributaries are described as having high stream density. In urban watersheds, the road grid, drainage ditches, and storm sewer systems act as tributaries and artificially increase stream density. This results in very rapid runoff. Compare the high and low stream density hydrographs on this chart and note how the stream peaks faster and with greater magnitude with high stream density. One effect of urbanization on a watershed is illustrated by these hydrographs comparing the response of an urban stream to a nearby rural stream for roughly the same amount of rainfall. The urban stream's response is characterized by a relatively rapid peak flow in a short period of time. Mercer Creek is adjacent to Bellevue, Washington. Drainage efficiency in its watershed is enhanced by the storm sewer networks and the road grid. Compare it to the more rural Nawakam Creek, which is further upstream from urban areas and is not fed by an extensive network of storm sewers and runoff from the roads. Mercer Creek has a dramatically faster response and a higher peak flow than the more rural Nawakam Creek. In a more urbanized watershed than Mercer Creek, with greater amounts of impervious cover, there would be an even greater volume of runoff and a higher peak flow. Urban streams will therefore flood at lower rainfall thresholds than their rural counterparts.